Hey guys, it is Sunday, April 7th, 2024, and I am here in La Paz, Bolivia. This Airbnb is perhaps my favorite in La Paz, Bolivia. I have stayed here multiple times. And if you watch my channel at all, you might know that I regularly come to Bolivia because I have family here. I don't do a lot of videos about Bolivia because I'm here so often. My videos on this channel are usually about places that I've been to anew, new places that I've been to. Uh, but today, I decided that in the theme of the walk and talk videos that I've been doing, there is a walk here in La Paz that I have done pretty much every time I have been to La Paz. The walk usually starts somewhere near El Mercado de Brujas, the witch's market, and continues down along El Prado and then into Sopacachi, and then usually to the apartment where I'm staying in Sopacachi. I have done this walk so many times, and I don't know why. Usually it's because I eat somewhere around um, Plaza San Francisco, which is right next to La Macardo de Brujas. So, normalmente, uh, estoy hablando en español. Normally, after you've eaten a lot of food, you want to go on a little walk so that, you know, your food can settle and you also get a little exercise. First, let's catch a taxi up to the witch's market. I will be using these today. These are glasses that have a camera built into them. We'll have to, we'll have to see how that goes. Bueno. Okay, I'm gonna try and catch a taxi. God, I feel like such a douche with this camera. I don't know, I'm just outside my building. Um, we really wanna go that way. The taxis are all coming this way, but we'll wait. This is my building. I think there's the market today, it's Sunday. I'm pretty sure the market is open today. Let's see if this guy. Hola. Hay un mercado cerca al mercado de Brujas, pero hay mercado sábados, domingos. Creo que es calle de Yampu, donde empiezo. La Yampu, Tagar, por el lugar. Sí. ¿Cuánto por ahí? Eh, hace 25 días. 25, es un poco caro, 20. Es porque soy un gringo. No, no, 20, ¿ok? <laughs> Bien. All right, boys. I think we're a little lost. Can't quite find the market. Hmm. That's not good. Should be here on Ayampo. Yeah. Señores, disculpa. No sé que hay un mercado en la calle cerca aquí, pero no sé dónde. Comer, pero puedes comprar fruta y carne y algo así. Ah, so allá, yeah, yeah. it's, it's todo en la calle, sí. Gracias. Gracias. Okay. I think we found it. I hope so. I certainly hope so. All right, I think I gotta go up there. I'm gonna go up there and take a left. I think that's it. I'm wearing my stealthy glasses. So this is Bolivia. Maybe I'll just do the whole thing with these glasses. And it just looks like I'm talking to myself. I know that. The problem with the glasses is that they have no real stabilization. And also I look like Superman, like a 50 year old out of breath, out of shape Superman. So, whew, 
I'm gonna sound completely out of breath on this video because the altitude is really high. Part of the challenge with La Paz is that the altitude, this is really, really high. So unless you're accustomed to it, you can run out of breath extremely quickly. There's a problem about this walk. I don't have a lot of the local currency with me. I do have my credit card with me. I think I found it. Or maybe not. I don't, I don't know. The thing is, the market I'm looking for, it's all over the street. You can't miss it. And there's no traffic allowed. There's definitely traffic down there. I'm gonna walk down there because I see tents. So last week, I got a Bolivian national ID card as a full-fledged Bolivian citizen. So, I'm technically Bolivian well, and American, dual citizenship. Huh. I am telling you. Okay, wait, maybe this is it. We have to go up. Walking up is a challenge. I've been here over a week now, and still the, the altitude gives me trouble. The longest I've ever stayed here was two and a half, three months. And even then, I never felt as acclimated to the altitude here as I do at home. But I'll just... Pero esta vez diciendo que no tengo muchos bolivianos conmigo, so, pero tengo hambre, pero necesito asegurar que tengo suficientes bolivianos para volver a la casa si tengo, pero, so, probablemente voy a caminar mucho, tengo suficiente para comida, pero, I don't know what I want to eat. And this is still just a small section of the market. This is not what I was looking for. And we may never find the market because there's there's traffic here. Wait a minute. I see more umbrellas down there. No. No, this isn't it though. I mean, I, I kind of know where I'm at, but this isn't it. Where, where did the market go? I found a way in which I can feel like less of a douche with the camera in my hand, talking to myself, where it kind of looks like I just have my hand up. Or if I put the face of the camera inside my sleeve, I think the market went away. I don't know what happened. The market, the market's gone. Because normally, normalmente esta calle es llena con tienditas. Pero, I don't know what happened. Maybe find some lunch. I recently just got citizenship here in Bolivia. So now I am a dual citizen of, of course, the United States and now of the great country of Bolivia. Which means I can come here and stay as long as I want. Last year, I came here and I came in March for a month. Then I came in June 
And then while I was here, I went to Chile, and then I came back. And they, the immigration, almost didn't let me in the country. And the reason is, because as a tourist, because I was on a tourist visa, you only allowed 90 days. Hola. 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 Agüita. Hola. Hola. ¿Cuánto cuesta? Cinco bolivianos. Hola. Tu madre, tu madre, tu madre. Hola. Hola. Gracias. Got to stay hydrated. So I went to Chile. And when I came back, they told me that they weren't going to let me in the country because as a tourist, you get a block of 90 days a year. And I had already used that block for the calendar year. Now, they were kind, and they ultimately let, it, let me stay in the country. They let me enter the country, but they said if I stayed longer, I would probably get arrested. And if I tried to come back before the new year, I definitely wouldn't be let in. Now, I had no plans at that time to return to Bolivia in calendar year 2023. It was already August. I wasn't going to stay. I wasn't going to come back. But, however, I did not like the fact that they were telling me that even if I wanted to, I couldn't return. And even if I didn't want to, I couldn't, couldn't return. They weren't going to let me. They were not going to let me. You gotta understand, like, my father was born here. I come here often. There's other reasons I come here too. Personal reasons. I have quite an affinity for this country. I, I like it here. It's very different than what I grew up with. Oh, I think I found the market. Here we go. But I have an affinity for this country because, you know, I came here when I was young once with my father and then returned as an adult several times. But the fact that they were telling me, oh no, you can't come back, that pissed, pissed me off. Kind of lit a fire under my ass to go ahead and finally get my Bolivian citizenship. So I did. So now they can't kick me out. Of course, that has its downsides too. So if you're wondering, like what downsides I'm talking about, like how could it have a downside? Think of it like this. Maybe you break some non-serious law, but serious law serious enough where they would just kind of ban you from the country. They would tell you, they would say, you know what, you broke this law. You're not allowed in this country anymore. Go back to your own country. And so maybe they do that because you're on a tourist visa and you do something, I don't know, I can't think of a law, but maybe it exists. Surely there exists some law that a tourist could break in Bolivia that would not send them to jail in Bolivia, but would send them home. Well, now I'm a Bolivian. They're not going to send me back to the States. I'm not here on a tourist visa. I'm not here on a visa at all. I'm here because this is my country now, I'm one of them. If I break that law, normally I would have just been sent back to the U.S. That would have been the end of it. Now, I could end up in a Bolivian jail for who knows how long. No quiero pasar tiempo en la cárcel de Bolivia. Me gusta este país, pero lo significante no es es que quiero pasar tiempo en la cárcel. So it has its upsides and its downsides, right? Like before I even had my ID card. I had a birth certificate. Now, of course, I have a birth certificate from the U.S. because I was born in the U.S., but I have a 
Bolivian birth certificate too, now. And when I arrived here last weekend, all I had to do was present the Bolivian birth certificate. And I got to go to the, uh, you know, when you go through immigration, there's multiple lines. <clears throat> yeah, well, there's usually at least two. The one for citizens of the country, and then the one for foreigners. And normally I always had to go to the foreigner line. But now, nope, get to go to the Bolivian line. That's right, because now I'm Bolivian. Can't you tell? So if you can see some umbrellas down there, I think that's the market I was talking about. And at some point we're gonna have to cut over to El Prado, the main street, and walk down along El Prado. If I'm not too far already, I might be too far, I don't know. The process of getting citizenship here, it was probably more difficult than getting it in the US. And I, it, it was difficult. There were two birth certificates I had to get. There was some form I had to get that say I existed. Literally, it was like a form that said, you exist and you're the only one of you. That's what it said. So it was bizarre. All right. This is it. This is it. Here's a bunch of little places to eat. I am supposed to get lunch with my family. So maybe I'll just get a little something. Let's walk down here because the market's going to go back and forth. On the taxi right here, the cab driver said, is this your first time in Bolivia? And I said, no. And he said, where are you from? And I said, well, I'm from the United States. But now, I guess you could say I'm from Bolivia because I'm a citizen now. So there are a couple little benefits you get. Like when you go to a museum, you pay the citizenship price as opposed to the tourist price. The citizen price, I guess. When I turn 60, I'll get a pension, I think. It's about 50 bucks a month. I'll take it. It's called El Bono. My father signed up for it on this trip. He's here as well. Signed up to get his bono. Which is 60, that's young. I mean, it's young to be able to get a pension plan from the country you live in or at least we're born in. The market seems empty. There don't seem to be as many people, nor as many vendedores. One interesting thing about La Paz, and I don't know if this is true for Bolivia at all, in total. I don't know if it's true for all of Bolivia, but at least here in La Paz. Let's say you want to get something for your kitchen in the United States. You might go to a place like Home Depot or Lowe's. Yeah, yeah, puedes comprar todo lo que quieres para tu cocina. You know, you go to a single store and you buy what you need for your kitchen. Here, there are no stores selling things. Well, maybe there are, but more times than not, what you do is you go to a street that's in a part of town, and there's like two, maybe two, three blocks dedicated to selling kitchen parts, refrigerators, stoves, dishwashers, things like that. Literally a street. Same thing for bathrooms. You need a toilet, you need a, kit, a bathroom sink, there's a street for that. You need a new television, there's a street for that. You don't go to stores, you go to a street. So this is the street I was looking for right here, where they saw all the vegetables and fruits. And a lot of people, they'll come here instead of going to the grocery store because it's considerably cheaper. Now, it continues down there, but it continues down there. I know I need to go in this direction. 
Let's go down here. You see, you have everything you need. Cantaloupe, cheese, ajo, slippers. So these are actually like little packets for that you would find in like a ramen noodle or something. Just imagine if Walmart was not one big store, but was spread among like 10 blocks, 10 city blocks. That's what you have here in Bolivia, or at least in this part of La Paz. It smells so good. I smell food all the time. Coca leaves. Mm. Just the smell of cut onion, diced onions. It's just so good. I don't know what these are. I think people are probably weary of the camera, so I try to not point it at people. I'm gonna put my glasses on for a little bit. A little more stealthy here, like this. One thing that is very unique to the United States. Hola, this looks good. Hola. One of the things that is kind of unique to the U.S. is the bacon. No gracias. You come up, you go to different countries, and you order bacon. It's not the kind of bacon you get in the U.S. Apparently, you can find it here because it's a specific cut of pork and a specific type of pork that's cut. The food here in Bolivia is probably my favorite thing about Bolivia, is the food. And I think it's probably so good here for the same reason it was so good in India, which is, it's all fresh. There's no chemicals. This avocado was probably just picked a couple days ago. Like, like how much time in the United States when you eat a burger at a restaurant? Oh, no, no, no. When you go to a butcher at a grocery store, how long ago was that cow slaughtered? Was it a week? Ten days? Two weeks? I honestly don't know. I do get the impression here, though, that when the cow was slaughtered, or that when you go to buy meat, that the cow was slaughtered no more than a week ago, if not a couple of days ago. All right, the market keeps going that way, that way. Uh, Tiene pollo? Tiene un sateña de pollo? Tiene? Cuanto? Seis, okay. Va a comer aquí o para llevar. Para llevar. Gracias, señor. All right, let's find a place to sit down and eat a salteña. Yeah, this is a good place. Okay. Oy. The salteña is a very popular snack. They usually eat it for breakfast. And what you gotta do 
usually there's a lot of juice inside. This one's pretty juicy, it sounds like. And the trick is to eat the Saltania without spilling any juice. I practiced for years to do that. But I realized the trick is just to drink the juice out. No, I didn't get any. This is a, a chicken Saltania. There's like a sweet bread. But here in La Paz, they say if you spill any of the juice of a Saltania, then you don't know how to kiss. Hold on. Mm -hmm. This is a spicy one. <clears throat> you didn't tell me it's picante. That's okay. Still haven't gotten any juice. I could hear the juice, still haven't gotten any. <clears throat> you can get Saltanias at a couple of Bolivian places in the United States. The problem is, well, I don't know if there's a problem, but they make them so big in the U.S. Everything's bigger in the U.S. So big. Here they're a nice snack size. In the U.S., a single sauteña is like a meal. Still haven't spilled any juice. The problem is, the dough is really sweet. So your instinct is just to go rah, 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 and the whole thing's going to fall apart. I mean, of course, I will cheat with the last part. Because the last part is the hardest to eat without spilling juice. I'll just shove this all in my mouth. The important thing to remember is that I didn't spill any juice, confirming which many people already knew. Okay. Now that I've eaten the Saltania without spilling any juice, we'll carry on. We're not going to go that way. That's uphill. It's too much. Hmm. I kind of want to, but I think we came from there. I'm actually a little turned around. I bought the Saltania down here somewhere and walked up. <laughs> I found these D entrepreneurial selling spirit here in La Paz or Bolivia in general. I speak mostly for La Paz because that's what I know best. I've been to a couple of other parts of Bolivia but I don't really know them that well. But the entrepreneurial spirit is is interesting. Ooh, we're gonna go down here. Mm. Maybe. What I mean by the entrepreneurial spirit is alive and well. Is people, somehow, they acquire the oddest things. Tissues, sunglasses, headphones, socks. And then they just go put a little blanket on the street and try to sell them. All right. I think we're going to turn around and just head back down. Zona Haraya. Zona Horias. Zona Harias. No. No, gracias. Apparently in Spanish, 
You have to be careful about how you say no gracias. You have to add a pause between the no and the gracias, else it's rude. Like in English, right? We'll just say no thanks. No thank you. In Espanol, si dice no, no gracias, es un poco torpe, es un poco grosero. No gracias. Solo necesitas decir no gracias. Mm. Gotta have that little bounce. Maybe we'll get something with some chocolate. All right. Mm. And this is what I mean, like, right? Like, it's not just fruits and vegetables that they sell here. It's everything: toothpaste, gloves, towels, laundry detergent, soap. Like I said, think of Walmart spread over five city blocks. And then, but Walmart doesn't even sell anything. Like, maybe Walmart sells refrigerators. I don't know. But not only is it Walmart spread over five city blocks. It's like Home Depot spread over five city blocks. I would jokingly say that instead of the neighborhoods in La Paz having names like Sopacachi, or Obrajes, Zona Sur, San Miguel, they should have names like Kitchen, Baño, Cocina. Names that represent parts of the house where they're selling items for. Aros de luz LED con su tripod para los selfies profesionales. Adelante, amigo, amiga que me escucha. Estás buscando protector para tu celular. Aquí lo vas a encontrar. I believe this market is only here on Saturday and Sundays. I'm not 100% sure about that. So I think normally this is just a regular street. <clears throat> People, you come here to shop, and I think I said this already, that you come here to shop because it's considerably cheaper, because there are, there are grocery stores here, obviously, of course. There are grocery stores, there are even stores that sell refrigerators and things like that, but if you get it on the street, it's so much cheaper. I should buy some papas. The potato chips essentially are so good. When they're fresh, they're really good. Intestines or liver? Kidney maybe? Bras? Right next to the fruit, which I mean I could make a melon joke. Whoa! Pretty sure this market has a name, but I don't know it. And I usually like to start at the top and walk down towards the bottom. And the food, oh gosh. Okay, here's the papas. They are fresh. Mm. Ah. And I feel like carrying yet another thing with me, which is why I'm not going to buy any papas right now. Mm. Clips. Travel tip. So I do get questions from time to time either on Reddit or on YouTube about being a quote unquote digital nomad. And I'm not really a digital nomad in the proper sense of the word because I do go home, but then I don't stay home for very long before I travel again. So in some sense, I'm a digital nomad, but I get asked things like, I, I have actually I've been asked before, like, what kind of things do you travel that with what, what absolute necessities that you might not think of do you travel with? So here's a couple of things. Clips, like the ones I just showed you. Clips, very useful. Always need clips. 
tape. Travel with tape, preferably duct tape. But if it's just gonna be a little like invisible tape roll, that's fine as well. Trash bags. You don't know how many times I've been in a place, an Airbnb, even a hotel room, where there's no trash bags. No trash bags. A couple other things that might be a little more obvious that I can think of offhand, like earbuds. You never know what the noise situation is going to be like where you're staying. Um, decongestion. Like, I will find, like even here in Bolivia, I'm not allergic to anything, but the air is so dry, I get stuffed up and I can't breathe and then I have trouble sleeping. All right, it might be, so this is similar. This is a little bit similar to KR Market in Bangalore. Uh, it's a similar feel. KR Market, I think, is a little more chaotic. This has some chaotic parts to it, but KR Market was more chaotic. Alberito. Pan, lots of pan. So this is kind of the end of the market right here. So I'm gonna hang a left try and get to El Prado. I don't know exactly where we are. I mean, I kind of know where we are. I know we're in La Paz. One nice thing about La Paz, though, is if you just kind of keep going downhill, you'll find out where you're at. Like, I, like where I stay is like downhill, Sopacachi. And it's not all the way downhill, but it's like medium downhill. The point is, is you can start uphill, just keep walking downhill. You'll get home eventually. I swear, I have heard Madonna here since I've been here in a week and I've heard Madonna in the last six months. I don't know why I keep hearing Madonna all over the place. Where are we? I don't know where I'm at. I'm just gonna keep going downhill though. Can't go wrong. If I keep going downhill, I will find my way home. Body extreme. Empieza el cambio. Begin the change. I think I've had a few comments that said, talk to more people on these walk and talk things. Talk to them. Talk to people. Talk to them. I talked to the one guy, right? I talked to the guy from whom I bought the Sateñas. Talk to people. I don't know. It's not me. I am beginning to question my strategy of walking downhill. I see when I said there's supermarkets, there are supermarkets. So there's a steep hill down here. I don't know if you can see how steep it is, but it is a steep hill. And I believe at the bottom of that hill is El Prado. Or I may have missed El Prado walked past it and we may be closer to Plaza Estudiante which we'll check out I guess I could do a whole other walk and talk of a proper walk from Plaza San Francisco to Sopacachi along El Prado but I probably won't this trip to Bolivia was um, a little unexpected because there was a minor emergency with my family here and my father a cousin and I we came here because I don't know people were really worried so we rushed down but things with the family emergency are looking better and looking positive so now 
My cousin has already gone back to the United States. Uh, my father goes back on Monday. And as for me, I think I'm gonna go back next weekend. I had literally purchased tickets to South Africa. And then the next day, my father texts me about this family emergency. And he says, I'm going to Bolivia. And honestly, at this point, I'm going to take advantage of any opportunity I can to travel to Bolivia with my father, which is what I did. So I had to actually cancel the tickets to South Africa and come down here. But South Africa will probably still be happening. May timeline. Oh, I know exactly where we are. So Prado is actually right on the other side of these buildings. Is this thing was Bob? No, I don't think it was Bob. Oh yeah. So in actuality, we will be able to see a little bit of El Prado. I'm gonna try and cut through this because I'm crazy. Oh my god, we're gonna die. Okay, we're good. Boy. El Prado is like a long street that cuts through the heart of La Paz. Um, there's like a median in the center and then there's stops, shops and restaurants and other things on either side of the road. And that's where we're headed. Because if you get on El Prado, if you get on El Prado and keep walking down, you hit Plaza, Plaza Estudiante. And if you walk further from Plaza Estudiante, uh, you'll eventually hit the apartment building where I'm staying. The roads are very, very narrow and El Prado is probably going to be super crowded. So once I get around this corner, I'm going to see how crowded it is and I might switch back to the glasses just because it's also easier, fewer hands. Oh my God, what's happening here? Okay, there's like another market. This isn't quite El Prado yet. This is above El Prado. Because the sun is going to kill me. We'll do it in a minute. Alright, let's go in the street. No, let's stay right here. It looks like there's some type of like kid oriented festival of some type. So, yeah. It looks like all of El Prado is closed, which I've only ever seen half of El Prado closed at a time, right? Because remember, I said it's like a big road with a median in the middle, so you have two sides. This looks like both sides are just completely covered with little stores and shops. We're going to stay on the side of the road where there's shade and out of the sun. One thing to keep in mind is that La Paz is 12, 13,000 feet in the air. I think it's like 3,800 meters high. So not only is the air very thin, but the sun is very strong. It is very easy to get very sunburned very quickly here. 
but I can take this opportunity. I can take this opportunity. No, I think I need to change the battery, but no. Is this going to get copyright strike? It might. Stay in the middle of El Prado. It's not that busy. Well, this is La Paz. This is El Prado, which is normally filled with traffic. But today, the only traffic in El Prado is foot traffic because of this festival. One thing I have noticed on this trip is I have seen, well, actually, I have a few observations. One, I have seen more police with guns on this trip than I have in the past. There is apparently different tiers of police or security, and not all of them have guns. This is actually the case for, I think, many countries. Um, but so here it's definitely the case here in Bolivia and normally when I would be here I wouldn't say it was rare to see a policeman with a gun but I have definitely noticed an uptick of policemen with guns and one thing I've always noticed about Bolivia at least here in La Paz is that there are a lot of female police officers. And I'm not making any judgment one way or another, it's just an observation that there are a lot of female police officers here in La Paz. I would easily say 40 to 45% of the police officers here in Bolivia are here in La Paz are female. Whereas in the United States, I would put that number at maybe 30%. I could be way off, but this is of course just my own personal observation. So behind me is El Prado. 
In front of me is Plaza Estudiante. I do think it's funny that with my pale skin, my American mannerisms, and my broken Spanish, I am a Bolivian. <laughs> it's funny. I don't know. I like it. I like that there is another country I can go to where, I don't know, I can go to. You know, when the United States eventually erupts in civil war. Oh, there's a bog. But when the United States eventually erupts in civil war, I can make a beeline for Bolivia. And it's not like they can refuse to let me in because I am, I am now a Bolivian citizen. In the distance here, you can see this tunnel above the tunnel is Plaza Estudiante. I'll be honest, I still don't understand the whole school, college, university system in Bolivia because people will say, like, I graduated university, now I'm going to university. Or there's a college, but they're going to university at the college. Or they're going to college at the university. I, I don't I don't know. Like, why can't we just have high school and... Because I think college is high school and then college is university. I'm not sure. Something like that. It's all very weird. So this building here is the university, one of the universities, the University of Bolivia, I don't know, but I, I, I do know that this is a school of some type. Hence, this is all Plaza Estudiante. And normally there's things happening here, like I've seen a lot of book vendors, Vendor selling food. Normally there's a lot going on right here, but now, today, for whatever reason, dead, empty, gone. So now we are passing through Plaza Estudiante and we are heading on to a road named Sesto Gusto. I'm going to try and make this. I do find it interesting that they name a lot of streets after dates. Seis de Augusto, 20 de Octubre. I know those are the only two I can think of. Cuatro de Julio, 25 de Diciembre. I made those last two up in case you didn't know. Here, it's about another five, 10 minute walk. To my building. I think I'm going to enjoy those last five or ten minutes in silence and not talking and concentrating on getting home while still being able to breathe. I'm gonna try that. Wait, do these cops have guns? There's a secret. No. One thing that I realized about having Boliv Bolivian citizenship, and now I can vote. So there's that. I can vote. The next election is October 2025, next year. I'm going to be here to vote. We'll see. Anyway, thank you for joining me on this walk. I hope that this has given you a a little more of a 
intimate inside look into La Paz. Thanks for watching and I will see you next time. Take care.